Skip, how much of this loss is on Dez? Stephen A. Smith, I, I have to admit publicly, I was so disappointed in Des Bryant at the end of that game yesterday. In fact, I was crushed over it because I thought he was going to make the play that would win that game to get my Dallas Cowboys to next week at Miami when Tony Romo returns. And look, because at the end of last year, I called Des Bryant the best receiver in football. And because all through the offseason, I called him an emerging team leader. And I campaigned for him to get his money, as did you. And he did get his $70 million, which he well richly deserved. Because of that, I'm going to hold him most responsible for that loss to Jameis Winston and company at Tampa Bay. Stephen A., I said Friday. It's time for Dez to learn to channel his rage and his frustration about all, uh, over all this losing into playmaking instead of into tirades against the media over things that should not matter to Dez Bryant. So let's go back to four minutes left in this game at Tampa yesterday. Third and short, and they throw it up the field. Matt Castle actually threw a good ball. I don't really believe in Matt Castle, but he threw a good ball right into the hands of Dez Bryant up the sideline for about 14 yards and Dez cold flat dropped it. That would have been a first down that would allow Dallas to eat a little more of that clock, maybe at least punt Jameis deeper into his territory. But as, as it stood, they had to punt right away from there and Jameis got the ball at the Tampa Bay 44 yard line. Now let's go to the end of the game. Late throw into the end zone by Matt Castle. Made a great throw, perfectly positioned deep ball. You can call it a Hail Mary. I thought it was a Hail Dez because a year ago, Dez puts that ball in his back pocket. He owns that ball. He posts up a, a safety. He's got a safety McDougald on him, Bradley McDougald on him. He posts him. He bodies him. He waits until the perfect point. He high points that ball, goes up, snatches it out of the sky, and Dallas wins the game. I have no idea what got into him yesterday. I'm not saying he didn't try. He seemed to lose the ball in flight for a second. He veered off path. He put himself in position for Bradley McDougal to, to get away with the little shove in the back. I would not have called it. I would not have flagged it because it's a jump ball with the game on the line. Let them play. Dez is bigger. Dez is stronger. All I know if I'm going to give him any excuse or break here, Stephen A., Maybe he can't jump off that surgically repaired foot. That's all I can figure out. Maybe he's afraid. Maybe it's, it's just too sore to launch off that foot. That's, that's all I got right now because otherwise he just looked lost. Lost the ball, lost his emotion, seemed defeated. I have no idea what didn't get in to Des Bryant. I thought it was going to be Dallas's game. It was not. So in the end, as unfair as it might be, that loss is mostly on Des Bryant. Well, Skip Bayless, let me say this to you. <clears throat> I'm not going to disagree with you, but I'm going to try and be, uh, if it is at all possible, I'm going to try to be a little bit more expansive about Des and the Cowboys than even you are in this particular situation. I'm going to separate a couple of things, all right? When we look at the pass, the drop pass, he dropped the pass. It's not like he tried to drop the pass. He jumped up for it. It hit him. He should have caught the pass. Elite receivers catch those passes. But similar to Calvin Johnson and him messing up that onside kick against Green Bay, and we'll get into that a little bit later, Des Bryant dropped the pass he should have caught. It's just that simple. There's nothing more to it than that. When you look at him, that jump ball, that jump, you know, that, 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 that it wasn't a Hail Murray, as you, Paul, you called it, a Hail Dez, because mm -hmm. it was up there for him mm -hmm. to get it. I completely agree with you. And you're not, I'm not making that call. Let him play and decide the game. Yes, he did get nudged in the back. So what? It's not the first time it happened to Dez. It wouldn't be the last. That's just the first time we didn't see him really go up for it the way he normally, normally does. If it's his foot, it's his foot. If it's something else, it involves a more expansive discussion. At the end of the day, what this comes yep. down to to me, Skip, I think it's a situation, it's a combo of a couple of things. 
I think the drop pass may have elevated his level of frustration that was already brewing due to the multitude of things that have involved not just him, but the Dallas Cowboys throughout this season and throughout this losing streak that is now the worst since 1989. I think it's gotten to them excessively so. I think they're getting asked these questions every week. None of the questions are pleasant. The post-game locker room, the practices, the meetings, everything is getting harder and harder, a bit more arduous because when you're losing, that's what comes with it. So I think that that has a role in it. I also think that to some degree, whether Des is willing to admit it or not, you have some people that looked at him, talked about how out of control he was, reminisced about past transgressions because of it. Not only that, it was in the immediate aftermath of a Greg Hardy, which is something that Des Bryant has to watch out for because we know that Greg Hardy is a problem totally different than anybody else right now, and that's simply the situation. Him going off on the sideline, I don't think it's a reason for everybody to get into Greg Hardy uh, because he was arguing with a teammate on the sideline for a brief second. Let's, let, 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 let's make sure we don't nitpick to the degree that we're monitoring every little thing the guy does to say he has a problem. We know he's got a problem, but let's not use that as an excuse to highlight. It. But in the end, if you're Des Bryant, you're surrounded by all of this. And I think that when you're at that on that play in that end zone, your zest, your passion, your desire to go for it the way we know Des usually has that desire. I think that dissipated a little bit uh, because of all the things that he's been going through. And it showed itself, if at all possible, on that particular end zone play in the end. So because of that. I would look at this game and I would give Des some responsibility for the loss, which is something that he's willing to stomach. But Skip, I got to tell you, I'm getting really sick and tired of it just stopping with the players or us going all the way upstairs to Jerry Jones. Isn't Jason Garrett a head coach? Isn't a head coach yeah, in the National I Football agree. League supposed to be able to stop some level of bleeding? They have now lost seven straight. Skip Bayless, no matter how much I get on Tony Romo, I know Tony Romo is great. I know Tony Romo can play, all right? But tell me you two and five without Tony Romo. Tell me you three and four without Tony Romo. Oh, and seven? Really? Darren McFadden didn't run the football well yesterday. But he had a 152-yard no. game. He had a couple to a few 100-plus-yard games since Tony Romo has been out. The mm -hmm. defense has played better since Tony Romo has been out. Cole Beasley has played well since Tony Romo has been out. Des Bryant returned since Tony Romo has been out. You're Jason Garrett. You can't find a way to win a couple of these games. I mean, at some point in time, even though he's the ultimate puppet for Jerry Jones because he just echoes verbally what, whatever Jerry Jones says or tells him to say, doesn't it get to a point where we look at Jason Garrett? Skip Bayless, I didn't realize this. I had totally forgotten about this till yesterday. Do you realize that Jason Garrett was asked by Jerry Jones to fire his own brother and did so? There are plenty of coaches. He did. It, there are plenty of coaches in, in, the yeah. in the National Football League, Skip Bayless. You come to them to say fire their brother, they'll tell you hell no. You know, at, you fire me. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that, okay? It's not him. It's me. Okay. But, Jace, I mean, at some point, I'm just using that to highlight. At some point, Skip, it ain't just about a play or a player. It is about the supposed leader of the team. It's supposed to be Jason Garrett, the head coach. Oh, you asleep at the wheel totally because Tony Romo is out? Come on, man. Come on now. Somebody got to look mm -hmm. at Jason Garrett. I'm sorry. Somebody got to look at him. I blasted Jason Garrett a week ago, and I am completely with you on this. The Dallas Cowboys, my Cowboys, have come close, have been in position to win six of those seven games. Thank and you. they've lost, at least as you four, point out, four, and everybody four, knows, all seven. Well, I, I think six times they had a chance. They had yeah. some fourth quarter chance to win six of those games. Yeah. Yeah. They have quietly, slowly, but surely learned to lose close games. They have gotten very comfortable with losing close games with no urgency, no retribution from the head coach, no fear of the head coach's wrath because the head coach has no wrath. The head coach is a Stepford coach. I don't know if you remember the yep. Stepford Wives movie, yes, but I he's do. like a robot. It's like yep. Jerry Jones created him in some laboratory or had him created, and he is just <laughs> a, a, a puppet who just gazes into the distance and keeps slapping the players on the back as they yep. come off the field. 
keeps clapping for his players That's no right. matter what happens, and they don't feel any urgency or fear from the head coach. Can you imagine what Jimmy Johnson would have done to this team? Marcel's. And again, or Jimmy Bill had a Marcel's. terrible year. He would have th- they, they would have thrown fits of rage that, that would have made Dez look like a choir boy, and the team would be afraid of losing, and somebody would have stepped up somewhere and made one play to win one game to reverse the tide of losing. This team is very comfortable with losing. This team looks at each other and says, well, here we go again, and it's going to be okay because our head coach will, will slap us all on the back and, and clap for us when we come off the field. That's all I got right now, so it's up to Romo to save the day because Jason Garrett is a non-coach. He's a non-factor in, in this well, equation. Skip, I want to say this. I'll close my comments by saying this. Again, we're not completely absolving Dez or any other player. We know that, you know, Dez knows he could have done better yesterday. You know, it, it just is what it is. He's got a lot going on, and, and we'll just leave it at that. But I will tell you this, Skip. If a miracle happened, and obviously I'm not talking about this season because Dallas, as far as I'm concerned, is done. But if we're talking about moving forward in the, in the, in the seasons and the years to come, and Dallas lucks up, and obviously a miracle happens and they win a Super Bowl. I, I don't care to see the head coach lofted like, you know, they're carrying him on their shoulders like they do Super Bowl champion coaches. As far as I'm concerned, Skip, I, I don't know what he's doing because to me, I don't get it. I, I don't get You can't win a game without Tony Romo. A game? Not one game? I mean, come on now. At some point in time, it's your responsibility to find this is football. Injuries are a part of the game. That does, that's not applicable to Tony Romo. If this were anybody else, we'd be talking about coaches on a hot seat or coaches getting fired. This guy, I mean, other than last year, the best that he has done with the Cowboys were eight and eight seasons. That's it. The last year, last year's 12 and four was the only mulligan. And that was because of an MVP year caliber year that Tony Romo was having and an MVP caliber year that DeMarco Murray was having. And, and, and even though they yep. should not have let go of DeMarco Murray, they have plenty of weapons on both sides of the ball to prevent themselves from going 0-7 without Tony Romo if Jason Garrett can do his job. I don't know enough about football to dissect the intricacies of what the head coach and responsibilities are. I'm a result-oriented dude, bottom line, because even if I did know, they tell me I'm lying and they deny it anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. But the results are something they can't deny. I'm tired of Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, Tony Romo, Des Bryant, Greg Hardy, or somebody like that being held accountable. Jason Garrett is responsible. He's the head coach. And damn it, he ain't doing his job. Somebody needs to say something. Okay, last quick point. Are you sure that a miracle can't happen this year in this NFC East thanks to your Giants and those Eagles? And now here come the Redskins. Are you sure it's over in the East? Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it just looks that way. I mean, you lose seven in a row. I find it hard to believe that you all of a sudden come back and win seven in a row. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you're not going to win the division at eight and eight, in my opinion. You got to go at least nine and seven, which means that the Dallas Cowboys would have to win every game once Tony Romo returns. I can't see that happening. I, I can't. I can't see that happening. I don't mind being wrong because I don't mind the Dallas Cowboys winning a few games and then teasing us until the last game of the season or some big playoff moment and then collapsing. But I just don't see that happening. I don't see them winning seven in a row. We'll leave it there. I don't think it's over yet. Okay. Skip, we're going to discuss that later. The Cowboys, of course, are the only team in the we NFL will. that haven't had at least one since week three. And as the guys mentioned, things not going well for the entire division yesterday, except Washington. We'll break down the NFC East later on. I'm really looking forward to that conversation. Up next, it was ugly in Denver, too. It was the worst game in Peyton Manning's career. Let that sink in for a minute. Are we seeing the end of Manning after being benched in Mile High? Don't miss that discussion.